Hello everybody. Welcome to Cooking 101. Uh, I'm Jen. I'm a dietitian. I am not a professional chef, but part of my job is to help people kind of navigate um, what to cook for themselves. Actually, a big part of my job is that. Uh, especially when people are kind of stuck in a rut of making the same thing that they're always used to making. Um, I usually step in and I help people improve the health and the content of what they're doing or if they're like, I don't know what to cook anymore, I usually step in and say, all right, you can cook this, this, and this. So cooking is a big part of my job and teaching other people how to cook healthy is a big part of my job. So I started this show uh, because during the worst of COVID when everybody was locked inside their homes, everybody was suddenly stuck cooking much more than they're used to. Um, and I wanted to help. So now we have Cooking 101. Uh, today's show, we are going to be talking about delicata squash. So it's September now, and uh, it's the start of the winter squash cycle. It, it's still a little bit early. Um, delicata is one of the early ones to come out. And as you can see, mine is pretty small. They can be like much larger. Uh, so these are probably pretty young in the grow season. Um, but let's talk about winter squash for a sec. Uh, winter squash gets a bad rap. Um, everybody's kind of afraid of carbohydrates and they attribute them to starchy things like squash. Uh, so squash has got kind of a bad rap because of that and I'm here to clear some of that up for you. Uh, squash is super good for you. It's shockingly low calorie for something that might be considered starchy. Um, it's got a huge high fiber content. That pretty much is what helps bring it back into the realm of um, healthy. Uh, the fiber content really kind of cancels out the carbohydrates. It doesn't make them disappear, but fiber is really good because it slows down digestion and it slows the absorption of carbohydrates. So if you were going to eat a super starchy thing, but it had lots and lots of fiber, it's not going to be the same as eating a bowl of pasta because Pasta in white, with white flour pasta, um, is usually void of most of its fiber, most of its protein. It's not very filling. Your body burns it up like it's paper in a fire, basically. Whereas with something like squash or sweet potatoes or an apple, um, even a banana, um, although I would say green bananas versus really ripe bananas, because really ripe bananas kind of get rid of that less digestible starch. Um, but squash, I need to focus here. Um, starchy vegetables that have a lot of fiber, they slow down in your system. So fiber makes you feel full. Uh, your body has to really work at it. A lot of it's not digestible. Um, it feeds the good bacteria in your gut. So you're basically cultivating a really healthy environment. Um, it also helps everything move. So I won't get too into that, but we dietitians have to talk a lot about that. But if you're feeling a little backed up, fiber is going to help you. Um, just make sure you drink water with it. Uh, but one of the things it does that not a lot of people know is it slows the absorption of carbohydrates because our body loves to burn carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are our fuel. If we were a car, carbohydrates would be the premium unleaded that makes us go fast. Um, we need them. They're not bad, but carbohydrates have a lot of calories and we love to eat them because they taste delicious. So we both need them and are eating too much of them. So if you're worried about starches being too carby, too high calorie, squash is gonna be your best friend. Um, basically, instead of burning through everything really fast, like I just used in my example with pasta, um, fiber only lets a little bit at a time into the bloodstream and then our body uses it and moves on, uses it, moves on. So unless you're eating piles and piles of winter squash, you don't really have to worry about the carbs. Pretty low. Also, I found out that like a cup of this stuff, of delicata squash on its own, 80 calories. So low, so low. So you'd be eating this forever before, you, like you would get full before you were overeating it calorie wise. So you would not feel well. So enjoy your winter squash. They're also super, super good for you. Uh, vitamin content. Huge in the beta carotene. Um, basically, if you have a vegetable that is orange, sometimes yellow, but more often orange or like a pale orangey yellow, 
um, really, really high in beta carotene. What is beta carotene? Um, it is an antioxidant. It gets converted into vitamin A when our body needs it. So it also feeds the eyes, um, keeps our skin healthy, is just generally an awesome vitamin. Um, it is a precursor to vitamin A. Our body likes to switch it to vitamin A when we need vitamin A, but unlike vitamin A, um, it's never going to build up in our system because there is such a thing as too much vitamin A. It's a lot, so don't worry about that either. Um, but if it's beta carotene, our body changes it over to what it needs, then it uses the rest of the beta carotene to, you know, do good stuff like fight cancer and keep our cells healthy and all that good stuff. So, uh, squash is awesome. Full of beta carotene, full of fiber, full of potassium. Uh, there are some others. Lutein. Uh, nobody knows what lutein does. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lecture on that, but it's full of good vitamins, full of fiber, low in calories, and you can do really tasty stuff with it. Uh, I'm going to show you how to roast it, do honey roasted today. Um, I did write on my description for today's video that this would be a vegan slash vegetarian meal. Um, not every non-vegan knows, but vegans don't usually eat honey because it is an animal and you are harming slash encroaching on its lifestyle uh, by collecting honey. So vegans usually stay, usually, most vegans stay away from honey. So this, this is a really easy fix to make it vegan. All I have to do is substitute the honey for maple syrup. It literally works the same exact way um, and makes a really nice kind of caramelized, delicious final product. Uh, it's just one switch for another. Uh, note on sweeteners. Um, honey and maple syrup both have vitamins and minerals in them, but they are not healthy for you. Uh, a lot of people really like to say, oh, I'm eating this dessert, but it's made with honey. Uh, and think that that is somehow magically better. Honey and maple syrup are both sugar, and sugar is sugar. So this is sugar that comes with some vitamins and benefits, but it's still sugar. Um, you're not somehow improving your life by eating a ton of desserts. However, if you want to add a little bit to some squash to make it taste even better, to make it taste like you're not eating your vegetables, that is totally cool. Um, just don't make a honey soup out of it. Don't drown it. Don't drown it in maple syrup. That's what you gotta do. So, delicata squash. Back to that. Uh, winter squashes are usually marked by the uh, fact that you can't eat their skin. They're very tough. Winter squashes are awesome because they are so tough, they usually will hang out for a long time. If you keep them in like a cool, dry place, they can last like a month or two. Uh, they're not going to go bad right away unless they have like a little nick and bacteria gets in there. Um, delicata squash is considered a winter squash. However, the skin is delicate. I wonder why they named it delicata squash. Um, which means that when you cook it, you don't have to worry about peeling. So this squash is kind of awesome for that reason. You don't have to peel it. All other winter squash, pain in the neck. Acorn... Butternut squash, you have to sit there, you have to peel it, or you cook it, and you scoop it. It's a whole thing. This, you don't have to do anything. You can just do it as it is. You can peel it if you want. Skin probably has really good fiber. Most skin does. So I have washed my delicata squash off, uh, and I'm now going to show you how to prepare honey roasted delicata squash. Um, so I want to get rid of the stem here. It's, it just pops off. You don't have to really worry about it. Um, otherwise, the whole thing is edible. I might cut the very, very end of it off just because it's probably not going to have more of the tender innards. Um, get yourself a big knife. Do not use a paring knife to cut these apart. I don't care how small they are. Uh, winter squash is tough. It's going to fight you. You don't want to be in the paring knife and like jiggling it around and have it slip out and stab yourself. So get yourself a big knife. Now, you can do this two ways. One is stab it in the middle while you're holding it and then lower the knife down. Um, this is a very small squash, so I'm going to actually just cut across the entire thing. Be very careful. Whoop, see? It slipped. But my fingers are okay. As, as I was going to say, be very careful about keeping your fingers away. Now, this has taken a chunk out of my delicata squash. I'm going to use it. Um, but it's made it flat, so it should not roll around again. Let's try one more time. Keep your fingers clear. Go very slowly. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. 
Okay, so you chop it in half. We got seeds. It's just like a pumpkin. It's just like a butternut squash. It's just like all squash. We got seeds in the middle. Get yourself a trusty spoon. We're not getting very high tech today because this is easy stuff. And you're just going to scoop the seeds out. Now, unlike a pumpkin, the seeds are a little bit smaller. They are probably edible. Most winter squash seeds are. If you want to go to the trouble of roasting them, you can try that out. But I'm just going to scoop the seeds out onto my cutting board right now, and I will chuck them later. Nothing crazy. And because these are nice and small, this little spoon gets all the seeds out pretty quickly. There it is. A little boat. Now, if you want to go another route, you can drizzle these with olive oil, roast them cut side down as they are, these little boats. And then you can fill them with whatever you want to fill them with. Uh, another good way to eat these squash. I'm going to show you how to make little wedges today. Because I like the little wedges. They're very visually appealing. Now again, these are like the smallest delicata squash I've ever seen. Which makes them very cute and very nice for a little individual feast. But they're usually bigger. I, I usually see little arches that are like the size of my hand here. Like that. Um... So those are more nice to put on a plate and present as like a little appetizer. Whereas a small delicata squash, you can actually do this whole preparation and just throw them in a salad because they'll be nice little individual bite-sized cuts. Just gonna wash the squash guts off me. There we go. All right, next step, wash your knife off because it's full of seeds. Seeds everywhere. Okay, get them off, get them off. Come on, man. Get off my knife. There we go. Squash can be very sticky. That's just the way it is. Okay. So, put your squash cut side down. Don't ever cut into a thing that's round if you can help it. I know that I started this off by cutting into a thing that's round. Wasn't the best thought out plan. So, do as I say, not as I do. All right, we're going to cut, uh, I don't know, half inch. These are really small, so I'm going to go with half-inch wedges. Here's a wedge. It's not a great example. That's a nicer wedge. 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 Little half-moons. And, yeah, I'll save the bottom. I'll put that in there, too. Sometimes the bottom can be a little bit dense, so I don't always use it, but this one's pretty nice. Cut the wedges. Now you may see that some of them still have a little bit of filling in them. You can still kind of scrape some of that out with your fingers if you want, like this had some seeds. But all of that stuff is pretty much going to go away when you bake it. So you don't have to be a perfectionist here. You never have to be a perfectionist with cooking. It all kind of turns out the way it's going to turn out. All right, so we've got our chopped up delicata squash. We're going to add some olive oil. Now the recipe called for a teaspoon, which is not a lot. Um, I'm eyeballing it a bit because I want to make sure these are coated well. Uh, definitely not a ton. You don't need a tablespoon. You don't need two tablespoons. That's a lot of olive oil. I need enough to coat these guys. I want to make sure they are coated. I'm also going to give a couple of turns with my salt. Now, why am I adding salt to something that is going to be sweet? Well, we've talked about salt before, and salt's best function is bringing out flavor. It's kind of like if you've ever baked a cake or some chocolate, chocolate chip cookies, the recipe calls for a little salt. Not, not a ton, just a little. That's going to add a little bit of flavor. So is the olive oil. Now, if you're asking, Jen, why do you use olive oil? Everything I've ever heard ever is that you're not supposed to cook with olive oil. Um, olive oil does have a high, uh, a low smoking, lower smoking point, not the lowest, but a low smoking point. Um, what does that mean? It means that if you are cooking with it, it might kick up a bunch of smoke and that's not necessarily good because that means it's burning. 
And it also might mean that you are adding some free radicals into your food. Now, I use super cheap olive oil um, when I'm cooking. I do not use fancy stuff that is very delicate. I usually use a blend. Um, it's usually more tolerant for that reason. Um, my olive oil is generally not extra virgin, or if it says extra virgin on the bottle, which this does, I know that it's a lie because it says it's blended and it was also super cheap because super cheap stuff, that's not like super delicate olive oil that you need to worry about. Um, olive oil is also really good for you. It is an anti-inflammatory and I find it incredibly important uh, to have it in my food as much as possible. And I also use it instead of butter because I'm allergic to dairy because I'm really lucky that way. So that is why I use olive oil. If I was using fancy extra virgin olive oil, I would definitely not cook with it at all. I would just use it as a dressing or as a dip for something. Um, or I would drizzle it on after I would finished cooking the meal. Um, but my cheap cooking olive oil, usually I don't have much trouble. And this is also a very short baking time. Uh, if this was in for an hour, it would probably burn up and kick up a bunch of smoke. I would not use olive oil for that. Same thing with like if I was frying something like a crispy tofu, which I did in that one time for you guys, uh, would not use olive oil either because that's very high temperature cooking. Um, but this is not so bad. This is like 15, 20 minutes in the oven. Not going to kill us. All right. So I've added a little bit of salt, lots of olive oil. Everything is coated. We're going to put it on a pan. Now, here's a caveat. I have a brand new oven, guys. It's really cool. It looks so nice. It's black and stainless steel. It's high tech. It works a lot better than my old oven, which I'm pretty sure was 20 years old and I just burned myself on it. So sorry about that. Um, it's smaller than my old oven, which I didn't think was possible. And I could fit a baking sheet in my old oven. I cannot fit a baking sheet in this oven. So we have ordered new baking sheets that are smaller. Um, this is a bread baking sheet. It does not have a rim and it has this fun hole at the top which I just noticed. So I wouldn't recommend baking on these, but this is all I had and it works. I'm just being very careful not to put too much liquidy stuff on it. Um, but you take your baking sheet, which is not a bread baking sheet usually, and you spread your delicata wedges all over it. Don't pile them on top of each other, but I would recommend you put them near each other. So I'm just gonna kind of direct all these guys on here and I'm gonna have them sit as interlocked as possible without being on top of each other. Now, the reason you don't want them on top of each other is they won't cook evenly at all. Uh, you just want a nice uh, s single layer. There we go. This doesn't want to flip. There we go, come on. Nice single layer. Why are we crowding it together? So the reason I am crowding it together is because we're not putting the honey on right away. I'm sure you noticed I did not dump it into the bowl here. Uh, we're gonna have to add that as the last step because we don't want burnt honey on here. We just want a nice honey roasted glaze. So what I'm doing is I'm just preparing the squash to be drizzled later and the closer they are together, the easier that is going to be to not make a mess. All right, so the squash is on the pan. It looks great, we're ready to go. Uh, I preheated my oven to, it was about 450. Um, if you do, I, I saw like six different cooking times and temperatures for this. Uh, it all depends on how hot your oven is, how uh, effective your oven is. This new oven is much more effective than my old one where I had to just guess and then add five minutes to most things I did. Um, and also my squash are much smaller than I think any recipe was really prepared for. So, 450 I think is a good temperature, but I would say start checking your squash, especially if it's small, at around 15 minutes, maybe even 10. Uh, for me, I waited till 20 minutes and it was definitely super deep golden brown on one side and it was a little too much. So 20 minutes is too long if you have small squash. If you have larger, thicker pieces, you can go up to 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Just start checking at 20 minutes. For this, I'm gonna start checking at like 10-ish minutes. So it's gonna go in the oven. Super hot oven. I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes, see how it's doing. 
Um, so I'm not going to make you wait 10 minutes while I just riff. Uh, don't worry, we have the magic of television where I pre-made this stuff. Oh, it looks so tasty. Look at that. So let me explain the next steps. Um, you're going to start checking at, as I recommended, 10, 15 minutes, 20 if you have big, thick pieces. Um, you're going to see whether it started to get soft looking golden brown. Now, when I said that this was like way too dark, this is what I mean. 20 minutes was too long for me, but it might not be for you. So just kind of use your best judgment. How big is your squash to start? If it's small like mine, you're going to want to do it for less time. 450 is still a pretty good temperature. It's nice and high, roasts quickly. Um, but when I turned it over, I adjusted the cooking temp. So then it got this beautiful little glossy glazed look instead of burnt. So we did it half right. Uh, a lot of cooking is sometimes just kind of translating someone else's work into what works for you. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't give you exact times to make perfect squash, but I can give you good tips. So, you put it in, you start checking. Um, I'm going to check at 10 minutes for mine. And if it looks like it's cooking really well, uh, you flip all the pieces over. Now, I just took the tray out and put it on top. I didn't try to do it in the oven with oven blasted. Don't do that. Take your tray out, put it on top of your stove, and get yourself a spatula. You're going to flip the pieces over and expose the less cooked side um, to the hot oven uh, pan. Um, and then you are going to take your sweetener of choice. Now, I used my orange blossom honey, which I had lying around the house. If you are a vegan, obviously don't use honey. Um, get yourself some uh, maple syrup. I would recommend making sure your maple syrup's at room temperature. If you refrigerate it, just bring it up to room temperature first. That way it's not going to uh, affect the cooking time at all. Uh, drizzle it on. You don't have to like pour it on. I literally just took the squeeze cap and I would just quickly go over it and then I went crossways over it. Don't go crazy. A little goes a long way. This stuff is going to spread out and kind of caramelize around it. You don't want to drench it in your sweetener. Um, and then you stick it back in for five minutes. And that's it. Uh, the whole process would take a max of 25 minutes to cook. And that's if you have, again, thicker, bigger pieces. Cook until it looks kind of glossy. Glossy. Oh, no. Live television, folks. All right. Glossy, glazed look. You can see it's very nice looking. I'm very excited about this. I really want to eat it. This is still good. It fell in the sink. It's fine. All right. Um, so that's what you're going for is this like honey brown color uh, roasted to perfection. I'm very excited about eating this as soon as I turn this off because I'm starving. Um, and that's it. So just to recap, you chop your squash into little half moons. You drizzle it with a minimal amount of olive oil. Start with a teaspoon. If you need a little bit extra, add another, I don't know, half teaspoon to a teaspoon. Uh, add a little pinch of salt um, or one or two turns with your salt grinder, if that's what you're using. Uh, spread it evenly on your baking sheet and then put it in an oven set at 450 degrees for between 10 and 20 minutes, depending on how big and fat your squash was. Um, I feel like I've been saying that a lot and I should be laughing about it. Uh, once you get a good caramelization on one side or it looks pretty well cooked, take it out of the oven, flip it over with a spatula, uh, and then drizzle it with your either honey or maple syrup. Um, oh, you can also add herbs at this stage. For the five minutes back in the oven, uh, I really recommend thyme. That came with one of the recipes. You know how I personally feel about thyme. So you can uh, put a little thyme leaves on there or fresh oregano, something really nice. Don't overpower it. Make it a fresh herb too. Don't do dry herbs on this stuff because we're baking. It's, it's not going to come out right. Um, so a little fresh herbs if you want to add even more of a kick. What do you do? You can serve this as an appetizer or a side dish. You eat it as it is as a meal. You can put it in a salad. You can... I think that's it, actually. I was going to say soup, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, you can do a lot with it, and it's really good for you, as I said. Good vitamins, good fiber, low calorie. Go crazy. Enjoy this stuff. So that's Delicata Squash, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, or you can message me. I am always available. This is my business page, so please send me a message if you have a question. 
Uh, I also take individual patients, so if you have ever wanted to work on your health and diet, I am here to help. That's what I do. Uh, you can always make an appointment on my website. My website is jrockrd.com. Um, otherwise, if you ever want to see something done in uh, Cooking 101, please shoot me a message or a suggestion or leave it in the comments. I am here for your input. Otherwise, I'm going to just keep cooking whatever I get in my CSA, which frankly is kind of fun for me. I really like it. Uh, get a mystery vegetable and see what I can do with it. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you have a great Sunday.